Generally speaking, there are three kinds of people. Existing players, a larger group of people who've tried fighting games before but ran away scared because it was too hard, and finally, a huge group of people who just don't get fighting games and haven't ever really been able to get into them. I'm Nihongo Gamer, and this is 10 Ways Guilty Gear Strive makes fighting games more fun and less painful. That is bullshit crazy. Number 10. No more walls. You've all been there. The round begins, you press a few buttons, you get kicked and punched in the face a few times, and before you know it, you're stuck in the corner with seemingly no way out. More experienced players know how to make a calculated guess and escape the corner, but for beginners who are just trying to learn bit by bit, this can feel pretty oppressive. In Guilty Gear Strive, walls are a little different. If your opponent gets you in the corner and lands a combo, they can only do so many hits before BAM! The wall just explodes and you're back to that sweet, sweet middle of the stage like when the round began. It's not always a completely neutral situation, but fundamentally Strive is trying to balance rewarding you for taking your opponent to the corner with a slightly less depressing situation for newcomers. And so far, I think it works pretty well. Number 9. Less Insane Make no mistake, at higher level play, this game is still 100% wild and insane. But if you've ever been playing a fighting game and thought, I have literally no idea what is going on, then rest assured, because with Strive, they've tweaked the game heavily to approach this exact thing. In previous Guilty Gears, there was a cool, highly creative system that allowed you to smoothly chain fast, light attacks gradually into the bigger, harder hitting slash, heavy slash, and special attacks. In Strive, this system has changed so that, generally speaking, Bigger combos require you to start with a slower, heavier attack. It's actually a bit of a controversial change for longtime fans of Guilty Gear, but for beginners, it just means that your opponent will be using those slower, riskier moves to start their big combos, and well, the game goes from 0 to 60 at a slightly more manageable pace than before. In theory, at least. Number 8. Combos actually end. One thing I found with this genre, known as anime fighters, is that compared to something like Street Fighter, combos are long. When I first watched tournaments online, I thought that was really cool and exciting, but when I went to a local event, I saw the reality. The player who lands a combo presses buttons for a really long time. The other player just sits there falling asleep until it's their turn to safely press a button again. I'm not super familiar with previous Guilty Gear games, but in my short experience with Strive, it feels like the chance to press buttons bounces back and forth at a really nice pace. And as a beginner, I feel like this is something I really like. There are some really flashy anime fighters out there, but for me, when the combos get too long, I feel less like I'm in a two-player game, and more like I'm just watching someone else show off. Still, to each their own. So far, I'm liking how the back and forth feels in this drive. Number 7. Online feels more like real life. If you're fortunate enough to have a weekly fighting game local event near you, then you get to see firsthand just how awesome it is to meet new people, find other players your level, and just generally feel like you belong to a community. But if you don't happen to have such an event nearby, then your concept of fighting games is probably warped by the included online ranked mode. And these online ranked modes can sometimes give you the wrong idea about fighting games. You might rank up and collect a bunch of points, but then stop playing because you don't want to rank down, or you might play super defensively and avoid taking calculated risks, just to make sure you don't lose your points. Strive tries to avoid sending you into the pit of ranked online despair by combining it with their lobby system for something quite new and potentially closer to a real life event. Instead of ranking up so you can play people at a higher level, you can walk into a room of any difficulty and challenge people much stronger than yourself, just like a local fighting game event with no barriers. If you lose, instead of ranking down and being matched with lower level players where you develop habits that don't work at higher levels, the game just lets you stay where you are. To prevent the stronger players from harassing the beginners, the online system just locks them out as their level increases. Does it feel like a real life local event? Not yet. But is it a clever way to avoid the typical ranked experience so you can focus more on playing as many matches as possible and get to having fun? I think so. Number 6. Dash is a button. Something that's common to anime fighters is the ability to run, jump, and dash in midair. But tapping forward twice is kind of a hassle, which is why games like Mega Man X have a dash button. A number of anime fighters have implemented this, and now Strive has it too. Learning to instant air dash the traditional way is actually kind of fun in my opinion, but ultimately, Having a dash button is really convenient and allows beginners to gain access to better movement options and avoid some of the frustration of getting consistent at doing a slightly unusual movement with their wrist. 
Number 5. A manageable moveset. I'm not familiar with every character, but for the characters I have tried, the movesets feel more manageable in general. Maybe as time goes on they'll release characters with increasing complexity and larger movesets, but for now it feels like it takes less time to come to grips with a character. This doesn't just affect learning your own character, but also helps you become familiar with the weird and wacky moves that your opponents will be throwing at you. And some of them are pretty wacky. <laughs> Number 4. A beginner-friendly new character. Arxis has stated quite clearly that one of the new characters, Giovanna, is specifically tuned to be beginner-friendly. She kicks, she punches, she gets stronger just by continuing to fight, but best of all, she has a pet with the pet recycling logo in exactly the place on its head where you would pet it. Jokes aside, I'm sure she'll be quite capable at high level too, but as a beginner, it's nice to know that there's a character designed to be straightforward, so you can focus on things like universal system mechanics, of which there are plenty. You can cancel moves into special moves, you can cancel special moves into Roman cancels, and you can even cancel Roman cancels. So yeah, look forward to that. Number 3. Slow motion. Fighting games can get pretty fast, and to be honest, half the time you're actually just making educated guesses about what to do next. But what if fighting games were more like The Matrix? Well, say hello to the new Roman Cancel. Opponent moving too fast for you? Slow motion. Blocking a million attacks and want your opponent to chill out? Slow motion. Hit your opponent and want to position yourself for a combo extension? Slow motion. With the slow move and don't want to get punished for it? Cancel into? Okay, I think you get the picture. And it's not just restricted to the Roman cancel system. Every time you hit someone and interrupt them for what's called a counter hit, this situation opens opportunities for more damage. But in many fighting games, you're only notified by a tiny bit of text in the corner of the screen. Not in Strive. When you get a counter hit, it is big. And you guessed it, slow mo- Number two. A no fluff tutorial. I've played quite a few fighting game tutorials and a lot of them have the same problems. Too wordy, too much focus on combos, too non-existent. The tutorial in Strive is actually not that unique on the face of it, but it's the execution that's impressive. First of all, these tutorials teach you about Guilty Gear, but moreover they teach you about fighting game concepts that will help you understand other fighting games too. Secondly, they get straight to the point. Pretty much every tutorial is limited to just two short sentences that sum up an important concept, and then you get five chances to try them out. And finally, tutorial mode and combo training are blended together, so instead of finishing a tutorial and then getting lost in a list of 20 combos, 19 of which you'll forget immediately, Strive separates the tutorial into five areas and gives you roughly one combo at the end of each area just to demonstrate some of what you learned. Part of me wishes there was still a combo training mode, but ultimately this is probably a good thing for beginners because instead of getting distracted by combos, you're encouraged to get into matches and try out those more important concepts first. I'm making this video after about a week of trying out the game and to be honest, I only use like one or two combos. Number one, roll back netcode. This may not seem like a beginner focused feature, but if a fighting game has bad online netcode, it's gonna scare people away, not just from that game, but potentially all fighting games. That's why I'm happy to announce that Guilty Gear Strive marks a very important step for fighting games from Japanese publishers by including what's known as rollback netcode. I'm not going to explain exactly how it works, but here's what you need to know. Most modern fighting games from Japan used to just let the game pause and wait if there was a delay in receiving controller inputs over the internet. This is less of a problem in Japan where fast internet is easy to access, but for everywhere else, it can be such an awful experience that even longtime fighting game fans will give up on their favorite franchises just because the online feels so bad. Strive is one of the first of the modern Japanese fighting games to utilize rollback netcode. Now the first time you hear the word rollback, it kind of sounds like it's going to rewind the game if there was an error or something. But that is absolutely not what actually happens. What rollback actually refers to is the fact that behind the scenes, the game will recalculate where the characters are supposed to be when the inputs finally do arrive from over the internet. And in most cases, the screen will just refresh and you won't even really notice that anything has been corrected. The important takeaway is that the game doesn't grind to a halt causing you to screw up your combo timing. A few other of the Japanese fighting games have tried this with varying success, but with Strive, the online matches themselves feel totally painless, and hopefully sets a precedent for what we can expect from modern Japanese fighting games going forward. Slash. 
And that's basically it. I think if there's anything I want to say here at the end, it's that Guilty Gear Strive is not pretending to be an easy game. Like most fighting games, it gets pretty deep. But what really sets Strive apart is how proactively it is trying to remove the things that are particularly frustrating for new players. And that's important because making the game easier, whatever that means, wouldn't necessarily make it more fun. It would just create a bigger gap between expectation and reality. Fighting games are fun, but sometimes that fun is hidden behind obstacles that scare new players away too early. Guilty Gear Strive wants to do anything it can to get you to understand that fighting games are like a conversation. A conversation that goes, I know what you're going to do. I know that you know what I'm going to do. I know that you know that I know what you're going to do. I know that you know that I know that you- SURE YOU GET- IT'S LAZY!